folks, it's Kim from Nordic Beer Time and I'm here today with uh, Rune, the brewery master from Lisbjorn Microbrewery and he is going to teach me something about beers that I don't know. So stay tuned for this one. Yeah, so here we have the first craft beer or style I was uh, getting to know in about 2002-03 when Nörgne started at 2001 and this is an extra special bitter but I the version I tasted first was the 4.7 version that's yeah it's yeah it's a bitter that was in the grocery store in Norway we are not allowed to have more than 4.7 of alcohol in the grocery store and this but, one is extra special because yeah it's it's higher ABV as well but uh, the history of bitters actually is a it's a pale ale from from uk or britain but uh, when they changed from uh, barrels or cask to when a bottle yeah came it changed the name of the beer as well to change to to separate the cask beer and the bottle beer but this this is the same beer and Actually, how long have you been brewing? You started out home brewing, I presume. So yeah, but uh, this was not the first style I brewed. It's some of them, but the first style I was doing was uh, porter, dark beer, or yeah, we were brewing Christmas beer. But we, yeah, I think porter was uh, the style I pref prefer. And, and it was uh, and it was Nögne that I tasted <laughs> of the first porter as well. So this is Chin. I haven't tasted this for a while. I haven't tasted this either. Just the grocery store versions. I'm excited to try them and uh, I can teach him about a bit of the brewery history and the style of the beers. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, so we can I ask why did you start with a uh, porter or a darker type of beer? No, but the IPA scene in Norway wasn't uh, strong or didn't come that early. No, oh, okay. So it's basically that was the thing of the time. Yes. So uh, uh, I, I think uh, when Nögne or Schettel come with the first IPA, <laughs> yeah, he was a home brewer at the time. And the phone is ringing. So. Yeah. Sorry about that. Yeah. There's nothing we can do about it. So, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. But let's get cracking. Let's yeah, try so the first one. Yeah, so we're going for that first. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. So this was basically the yeah. introduction for uh, craft beer for you. Yes. Uh, so I yeah. pour a bit. Oh, it looks nice. Yeah. Nice head. Oh, yeah. The head is basically a three finger <laughs> and it's what would you call it reddish uh... it's an almost amber gold yeah. color and, uh, but uh, I know that Nögne usually like made live ales where they didn't force carb the beer before but I don't know what they're doing now I know they for the production cost they started to force carbonate the beers but, so it's uh, not natural carbonated anymore i don't know i don't think so i, I don't they, i know that they uh, they go away from it for a while okay but i'm not sure what this is ah. but usually it's uh was when i taste it it was always uh, a live ale or a real ale and the style is have always always been a um, live or real ale Quite good estuary feel to the beer smell, aroma. It's not a pungent. No, it's it, it's it's a floral, like they have used East Kent Golding in it. Fuggles is a popular hop to use in bitters, but that it's off, yeah. They have it's, sediments and everything in it, so yeah. So it's pretty much a a live ale. They have used oh. golden as well. They have used some caramel and yeah, biscuit malt, but uh, the traditional 
style and now they use sugar in the UK. But can I ask, what's the difference between an ale uh, or uh, an English ale compared to a bitter? Yeah, it's it's the same really. It's it's a traditional ale. They use yeah, they use table bears a lot in the UK as a cask, and they are often uh, miles. There are about three and a half to four percent. That's that's the norm usually. So we can taste this. Yeah, it's just quite biscuity. It's like you're eating a cracker. Oh yeah, but it does have some floral flavors to yeah, it. Yeah, that's the hops, the UK hops or the you just can't and have some spices in it, spices as well. Yeah, I would say some slight cinnamon, uh, cin mm. cinnamon uh, flavor, and yeah, so all salt tavern. So it's it's not a special. I don't think this is what you will say is the the the, the style that's our. Uh, Oh, it's six and a half percent as well. So, I don't think many of the UK guys are, yeah, drinking this this a lot. It's more than four percent to four and a half way. But this this is very good. You have the, the most uh, extra special bitter that is most common or famous in the UK is Fuller's. What I what I know, I don't I don't know everything of beer, but. Uh, that's quite good. This is uh, have much more flavor, more complexity of of, of the style, of the, as well. But it it feels. I don't know if it's just by the name. They maybe have salt in it. Yeah, yeah. it feels salt, a little when bit salty. When you put salt in beer, like goes <laughs> goes, they uh, they uh, are uh, the salt is for one purse. Yeah, it's to put the flavors. Forward, to, to increase flavor promote flavors yes that's what salt is for in beer or food or if you eat fish without salt it don't taste anything so okay um, okay yeah so uh, this was my first time trying this one I would say overall it's a uh, quite nice beer at least yeah it's, it's very good but I don't know I don't know if the newcomers for beer that have just pale ales or uh, IPAs and lagers will maybe think this was special, but it's very good. Oh yeah, uh, I can say if this was my first beer, I wouldn't probably appreciate it at the same way as I do now. Oh, sorry for the sound; it's a little bit windy in here. Uh, yeah, I probably wouldn't have appreciated the beer as it is. Because I wouldn't have known better. So yeah. yeah I, so the I second beer, it. the first beer that uh, we released in Lisville and was a uh, American Pale Ale with Cascade and uh, Amarillo. It was uh, continuously hopped uh, every second minute in the last twenty minutes. So uh, that was the experience, or uh, what you call it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Not sure where you want to go. You can no. take it on in Norwegian and uh, no, uh, translate. <laughs> I'm quite, um, you know, dog we shed. They do the same. So I got very inspired from them. Ah. So I, I, see, I, I made my own version of the beer. I haven't ever tasted the beer, really. But I have followed them uh, from the very start. They started in 95. So uh, I have tasted uh, some of the beers from Italy. They have a uh, Brewery, they collaboratory brew, brew they have out there, or they are part owners. I don't know, mm. but I have fun of my own technique of continuously hop beer, nice. so I don't use bitter hops in beer. And for uh, the ones that are newly followed, uh, this guy was my previous boss at uh, Lucifer Microbrewery or in which in Lucifer Microbrewery. So, yeah, um, I have tried basically most that he has ever brewed, 
Yeah, we are brewed from some sour beers, barrel aged beer, different kind. But you have one unicorn that is gone and it's gone forever and that's the Imperial Russian style that you had. So yeah, that was in... Uh, that was of, a special I, beer. I cannot tell, we had uh, we have done some collaborative brews with uh, the famous Simon Martin from Relay Craft Beer. We have brewed four beers with him, or five. I think we do two, one a year. And uh, that was the first one. It's uh, a peat whiskey barrel we used, and the first time I, <laughs> or for the first time I tried it from the barrel, I think, oh fuck, I ruined it all together because it was so peaty, and uh, I, oh, this is fucked up. But it uh, went six more months in the barrel, and tasted then, okay, it's coming. It's a beer. It's an imperial stout, <laughs> and uh, when it comes to the bottle and aged more, it. Uh, it's a fantastic beer, uh, yeah. So the guys from this, that distillery, the uh, distiller tasted it, and he told me that it was the best beer he had. <laughs> but of course, he has uh, made the whiskey, and he, uh, yeah, what should we call it? Uh, he, bias or yeah, yeah, yeah he is quite, uh, <laughs> quite biased. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but that's allowed. Come on, it's allowed. Yeah. Uh, you're proud of what you made from before, and you're proud of what you made, and infusing those two flavors yes. into and we one, have, uh, yeah. of course. So brewing is quite challenging. When you are going from a home brewer to a commercial estate, it's, it's more than hard. I don't think people... Trust me, I know. <laughs> I don't think people really don't think about what's involved to start a brewery. I didn't. I have on the hallway, so um, uh, trust me. Good I luck this guy for your new brewery. my teacher. Yeah. So good, good luck <laughs> for all of you guys that's gonna start a brewery of some kind or your own business. It's. But should we finish off this? Yes, and so we can try the next one. Try the next one here. Maybe we should rinse it in water. So here we have this shallow boot. It's a porter from uh, Chin. That Aspen have made, and uh, I know I don't know if this is a new beer or when he brewed it because this pandemic stuff have been yeah what we call it ah uh, it's quite fucked up because I haven't oh, done yeah. I haven't been to a bar for two years I just been in the brewery and home in the store so uh, yeah yeah we go to the uh, Vin Monopola. Uh, that's sometimes where you get everything some... over four point seven, and then you can yeah. Get... So this this was a new store. Yeah. I haven't been to that for three four years. So so, so yeah. So we're gonna try this one. Yeah, and we have nice. uh, we have a guy. We have some uh, uh, what you call it? A local woodworker. Yeah, no, and yeah, a fellow the, home, brewer. home brewer, but he is. Uh, we have this uh, home brewer association. We are, yeah, we have some meetings twice a year or more. So I have had it in my brewery as well. We have the guys have competition and stuff. So one of the guys, uh, to handing, he's making different uh, beer openers. So this is tall. He has a CNC machine and he makes different of them. So we get always. This is from. 2016 and have some different stuff so he makes and here is one nine millimeter bullet he's that's a pocket opener the nine mil pocket opener yeah so you open it they're very nice so for all your gun crazy people yeah. out there <laughs> so they're nice so, uh, I'm looking forward to it. Uh, to say it like this, uh, porters and stouts are not my biggest thing, so that's why I asked Luna to uh, come with, with me. And hopefully this is not the last video that he's uh, joining. Because yeah. this is way out of my comfort zone. I'm an IPA guy, a uh, Pilsner Lager IPA. Uh, Bonds guy. So uh, this is why he's here to teach me uh, the darker ales of life. Yeah, and bitters. <laughs> I don't think you have tried a lot of them. So no, well. not tried too many. Uh, well, before I started uh, brewing myself, 
bitters for me was in the name. Yeah, this but, is gonna but, be yeah, bitter. But, yeah, but no, yeah, but no, <laughs> they're but, not that bitter. No, but people are uh, because the, the second beer we brewed at the brewery was a bitter. I call it a bitter. I make it uh, but traditionally you use a lot of green colors when you make your. Uh, labels for it is that I said a tradition but when we put it out I just call it bitter I didn't have any name for it all the beers in the start didn't have names just the style and people bitter oh my god it's bitter we cannot buy that so uh, I had to change the name of the beer same recipe and I call it uh, English pale ale and I tripled or more the sale at least not double four times maybe and um, Untapped was not ready. I didn't was was not <laughs> come when we started. So, but the rating was on rate beer, and maybe a year after uh, Untapped come. But when they rated it first, it rated really bad. <laughs> but we didn't change anything, but the label, and the rating double as well. So it's it's in the name. Many people. I have no fucking clue what I'm drinking, so that's quite strange. And I, yeah, so the, yeah. And this but, one, I have to say, this is as black as spent oil. This is what I can say is black yeah, as spent but oil. This, uh, yeah, what people are thinking when they're gonna drink a dark beer, it's very heavy to drink. Like Guinness, that's 4% ABV, and uh, it's not a heavy beer, it's like water almost. It's only the color of the beer. It's like when you're making a sauce or anything, you're putting some caramel or Coke. If you don't have color in Coke, it will be green. So, there's a, yeah. Yeah. But, yeah, but but beer as well. You don't need to have a lot of malt that's a very dark to get this color in it. So, it's very pleasant beer. It's yeah, very the head good. retention it, is quite nice on this. It's one. very good, and chin use uh, they're very traditional when they make beer, and very high quality always. And you see the bubbles in this beer. If you can see the bubbles going back and forth, the smaller bubbles you have. This is real ale. He always does it, and we always does it. And you can see the aspect of the the carbonation in the glass. If it's very small bubbles, it's probably a real ale. And have uh, the second uh, fermentation. It's it's very good quality and good quality malt, and the brewer have done a really good job as well. So, so it will not be a heavy beer at all. It's quite refreshing, even if it's dark, and have uh, some coffee flavors, chocolate nuts, maybe raisin, dried fruit, and stuff. And I don't know why pe people are very. Uh, I, I cannot drink a dark beer. I, I don't can understand that because it's very good. Just a warning. I have been drinking darker beers. Uh, and the smell, of, of and them, the smell is fantastic fruity. It's fruit all over the place. That's for all of them that I've tried. Uh, the thing is that I haven't ventured into the darker aspects of ales. So looking forward to actually try mm. and learn something about them. Uh, yeah, and if you're going to have a dessert, maybe some cookies or ice cream, yeah. this goes very good. And but it's, this is and more it, of a traditional not, one, right? Yeah, not the it, New Age cookie No, no, this is, this is uh, Porto things. and the history of Porto as well. Uh, it's uh, in the 1800s or, uh, yeah, the 19th century. The, um, the style of beer, you have stouts and Portos. Portos are made, what my perception is, mm. with... Uh, black pattern mm. to get the, the flair there, the color of it. Stouts are more like uh, roasted barley. Um, the difference between those molds are, uh, of course, the taste and color, but the color is very much the same. Um, uh, but some, when I brew a porter, I just only use black pattern. I don't put any roasted barley, roasted malt in it, because it's more about the color of the beer. And, and a lot of the beers that are black is because uh, taxes and stuff uh, and war and politics. Most of our style of beer comes from that, actually. So, uh, so the Portier, so Porto, Porto, yeah, 
in the ports in the UK, the name got from the workers at the ports, really. So um, now we both already have cheated a little bit. We already tasted and smelled, yeah. as you yeah. probably see. Well, it's fruity, but yeah. it's quite dry in taste. It, this is five and a half percent. So, but I actually I had a one last year with Snögne port a robust port a seven percent. I prefer them a bit more. Uh, but uh, this is very good. Yeah, I I like this. Yeah. It's, it's uh, easy, easy going and uh, I can sit yeah. drink this all night. I don't need a... I would say light. this is an entry level porter for this kind of style of beer, maybe? <sighs> yes, it depends on the palate. People, sweet things. Uh, stronger beer, more sweetness you get. This is a medium sweetness. I think. Yeah, but as an entry, you don't want to, if you can imagine going into a liquor store or Vin Monopool as we have here, going in and you see all the labels and you see all the percentages and you just get overwhelmed, uh, overwhelmed yeah. with everything. And okay, but this, this, I want this, this, something yeah. easy going. Yeah, this is quite easy going. So you, yeah. It's, yeah, you can Entry sit. Level. Yeah, you can sit in summertime. Perfect or for today. Yeah. Mm. No, I like so this, so this is the style of beer I was starting to brew, um, because I love them, and uh, uh, yeah, so it was bitters and portos I started. So the, the third beer that I was making, or the fourth beer, was a uh, oatmeal porter for the, the, the grocery store. The uh, third beer was a red IPA or a <coughs> amber. Amber Hoppy and Amber Hopper Amber, yeah. so, so the style IPA is not four four and a half percent actually it's more a session beer but yeah but it's sold very good but thanks for the uh, lessons in history Luna thank you for uh, joining for uh, to teach me uh, things that I don't know. Yeah, and you about guys, here. but uh, we have a lot more to say if we can sit there for hours and talk and oh, talk yeah. and talk. If it, if, <laughs> I if, can if, guarantee if, you. If, we if it was. So, this is a small dip into it. So, yeah. It's hopefully not the last one uh, that you will see that we are trying more of the darker side of ales. Yeah. And um, I, I, I love Imperial Stouts from. Yeah. From eight to but please 15, 16 percent. Let me grow a little bit first. <laughs> yeah, but the, the, the people I try it on, they are. Uh, oh, is this beer? Oh my God, I haven't. I, I didn't think I was going to drink that at all. So. Yeah, uh, I have tried some uh, with him, without him. It hasn't been my biggest thing, but it's something it's... I probably started in the wrong end. No, but it's setting, a lot of setting, when you are with people or food or, uh, yeah, yeah. you that don't, you don't crack open a half liter bottle or 10 of 15%, uh, any kind of beer alone, not yeah. often. <laughs> but I least. can say this though, this has had, this has been a blast for tonight and trying something new for me at least and Luna just getting to uh, get in front of the camera and they have been a while so yeah. yeah usually I do this with Simon or yeah I hope you enjoy the video cheers I hope you have a good time and remember life is too uh, short to drink cheap beer Skål.